All right, so we're going to write the equations for these absolute value graphs. Uh, we'll start with the equation on the left here. Uh, so basically, with an absolute value graph, the most important thing you must recognize is the vertex. Okay, so I recognize the vertex here is at 0, 3. All right, so when I, write the ver when I write the function, we know that it starts off with the absolute value of x. All right, but I also recognize um, that if the vertex has a shift, then that means it's actually going to move the whole graph. There's no horizontal change, so nothing goes with x, but the graph does move up 3. Okay, but you'll also notice that the graph looks a little wider than usual, so that isn't all that I have to do. I also have to account for the vertical stretch or the compression. Okay, and now with absolute value graphs, it's actually quite simple. What we're going to do is we calculate the slope between two points for an absolute value, which makes it real easy. So from here, we're going to go down 1. Okay, we're going to go down 1 to the right 3. So if we go down 1 to the right 3, my actual equation is going to be negative 1 third absolute value of x plus 3. Okay, but here's another way you can fix it. So with absolute value, it makes it real easy to in order to find the multiplier or the vertical stretch or compression. So let's say we didn't see that. Okay, so let's say we didn't see that. Uh, and this is what you would do. You would take the second point you're given, which is at 3 comma 2, and you'd plug it into your function. Okay, so 2 goes here, and then the absolute value of 3 plus 3. All right, now... Here's what we need. We know that there's a number that goes in front, right? There's a number that goes in front of the absolute value, and we don't know what that is. But in order to find out what that is, okay, so we have this. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. So 2 equals 3x plus 3. All right. We only need to focus on this part right here, correct? Because that's what we need to figure, figure out. Now, something plus 3 equals 2. All right, so in order to find out what that is, again, just like regular algebra, we subtract 3. We get negative 1 equals 3x. And then we divide by 3. x equals negative 1 third. So what that tells me is this 1 negative 1 third is the multiplier that goes in front of my function. Because if I plug in negative 1 third to that function, it's going to give me exactly what I need. Okay? So, again, all you have to do is put an x in front, or put an x where the multiplier should go, and then just solve for x, and then you have your multiplier. Okay? So, if we go backwards here, so the final function for the problem on the left is f of x equals negative one-third absolute value of x plus three. Okay? Okay? Let's go ahead and do the problem on the right-hand side. All right, so I realize my vertex is down here at 2, negative 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip that step where I show you it's just absolute value of x. So I know it's the absolute value of x minus 2, minus 3. All right, I know that there's a multiplier in front because, again, I notice that the slope of my line is a little bit steeper than usual. Okay, so that means there's some type of uh, multiplier happening here. So let's use the second point we're given at 3 comma 1 and plug it in and see what the multiplier is. So at 3 comma 1, this is what we would get. Okay, so this is going to be 1 equals, that's going to be 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1, so 1x minus 3. Okay, if we add 3... That's going to give me 4 equals x. So that means my multiplier in front of my absolute value is 4. So my final function is f of x equals 4, x minus 2, minus 3. Okay? So that's how you find it. Uh, it's just as simple as using the secondary point, and we know that there's a multiplier that goes in front, and just plug in those points to find out what the multiplier is. 
All right, so that kind of gives you a quick tutorial on how to do absolute value. I'll show you how to do this with uh, quadratics here in a second.